Hello, today we're flying from Taipei to Singapore on the Boeing 777-300ER extended range. It's the same plane that Eva Air uses for long haul flights. So if you're flying from Los Angeles to Taipei or something like that, this will likely be the same plane and a very similar experience. And we won't be flying in business or premium economy, but we will be staying humble and flying in basic economy. Stick around until the end because I'll explain how I booked this flight using Eva Air Miles. It's all the new stuff, sir? Yeah. Our journey begins at Taoyuan Airport, airport code TPE. Checking in for a flight, they weighed my carry on luggage. And in economy, you only get seven kilograms and a personal item. I brought a backpack and my carry-on luggage. I split up the weight so the luggage would be seven kilograms exactly. And as you can see, I am very proud of myself. Now, we just have to make our way through security. It is now 7.53. We arrived less than 20 minutes ago and we are now through security, have our tickets and can wander around the airport. Since it's early in the morning, we haven't eaten yet and we need some breakfast. Now most restaurants can be found on the second floor immediately after getting through security and we're gonna go up there and find some food. Our go-to is typically gonna be McDonald's. All right, so we're gonna go get some food on the second floor of the food court because uh, that's where the food is. There's no lounge for us today, but there's a lot of nice seating and uh, yeah, decent places to eat and the environment has been refurbished. So yeah, so it's gonna be a nice experience. In this area, there's only these two restaurants. There's a McDonald's, there's a Jamba Juice and some coffee. But since I live in Taiwan, getting Taiwanese food isn't really a priority. If it is for you, then th you're in luck. There are a lot of Taiwanese options at Taipei Airport. You're just gonna have to walk around a little because there have been some new additions to the food selection at TPE Airport. And I recommend getting to the airport early to explore them. Over here in the Seagates area in Terminal 2, you can find a bakery, a cafe, a tea shop, a shop that serves a very good braised pork rice, and another shop that serves soup dumplings. All right, if you're in Taipei Airport, Wang's Bra, get the braised pork rice. Bib Gourmand, so Michelin rated. That's the one. All right, we're here at Terminal 2, uh, TPE Airport, Taoyuan, and there have been a lot of upgrades as far as food and shopping. So don't waste your time at McDonald's like us. Water, right? Yeah. Or anything else? No, that's it. All right, so before our four and a half hour flight to Singapore, we're just going to pick up some water since we're flying in economy. So each of the boarding gates here at TPE Airport are 
specially designed, and this one is all about movies. So it's worth it to get to the airport early so you can wander around, get some food, and experience all the different gates. Boarding is typically downstairs, so we gotta go downstairs once you get to the gate. And I think they check our ticket again here. Oh, nope, they don't. EVA Airways, BR 215, bound for Singapore, is now ready for boarding. We would like to invite some passengers Royal Laurel Class passengers, Infinity Monthly Land Diamond and Gold Card members. Star Alliance Gold members and passengers who are traveling with infants or needing special assistance to board first. Airbuds. Economy seat tour. All right, it's tough to get good footage in economy because you just don't have the space. So I did not get great footage. That walkthrough was it. Yeah, that, that's it, here it goes. I'm pausing it, you see it, that's the seat. It isn't very spacious. And if you are here for a long haul flight, be, uh, be ready to try and sleep through it. Now beginning our tour, the armrest only has a button for the seat recline. There is no remote for the in-flight entertainment. The seat, however, does look like it's in good condition. Maybe they recently reupholstered them, but as for the seat cushion, it's definitely worn out. Two hours into the flight, my butt was worn out. I found myself readjusting due to the discomfort of the seat padding. As for power sources, you get one USB outlet which is located at the bottom left of the in-flight entertainment. Here's a window. It is a classic window that you can open or close manually. Upon closer inspection, you can see what's outside the aircraft. Yeah, that's technical stuff where like, hey, there, there's a window. I, I don't know what else to tell you. The ceiling holds reading lights, which you can turn on through the in-flight entertainment, but there aren't any air vents on this plane. For seating in economy, it is in a 333 configuration, so it's, it's gonna be tight. As far as legroom goes, you get 32 inches, according to Google. IFE. The in-flight entertainment is pretty good. You can't connect your headphones via Bluetooth, so you'd have to bring your own wired headphones or use the cheap, uncomfortable headphones that Eva Air provides for free. 
Now, there isn't a remote for the TV in economy, but it's a very responsive touchscreen. The quality of the videos are very poor at a low resolution. It's like trying to watch a video on Facebook in 2010. Due to the low quality video, which is something I anticipated, I just bring an iPad with me and have the shows downloaded that I want to watch. and meals. During the trip, we got one snack, a drink, and one meal. You could always ask for more drinks, by the way, if you are very thirsty. Eva Air gave each passenger one bag of these mixed nuts and rice crackers, and yes, they are very tasty. If you want to buy these, you can. They sell them at Family Mart, a convenience store in Taiwan. During drink service, I got a Coke and two ice cubes, two very small ice cubes. But that's intentional because the less you eat and drink, the less you use the restroom. And that makes sense when you have a lot of people and not many restrooms. Since this isn't a long haul flight, we'll be getting just one meal and that's okay because the food isn't amazing. For lunch, we had the option of wok fried chicken in spicy sauce served with steamed rice and roasted fish with tomato sauce served with sweet potato. I went with the chicken and my wife went with the fish. Both were just okay. We weren't really on this plane to enjoy the meal and that's what happened. We did not really enjoy the meal, but it was satisfactory and sustained us until we got to Singapore. Although I really think this is something Eva Air could improve on significantly because there's a lot of good food in Taiwan and they have the resources to do that and it's a very competitive route so uh, if I were you I'd probably look into Starlux or Singapore Air if you happen to be flying this route. Even though this was only a four and a half hour flight, other passengers were getting restless, including myself.
to Singapore. I'm gonna use this in the video. No. Just so you know, it's too late. There's no takeovers. There's never too late. It's always too late. Nothing is impossible. That's why they call me Dan. Too late in real life. No, 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 no. Uh, and they call me neighbors. This is too late. <laughs> Now, while walking to the immigration hall and seeing this big sign that I completely neglected because I was like, maybe this isn't for me. It's for everybody. You do need to fill out the Singapore arrival card and you will need data to do that. If you are on your phone, there is free airport Wi-Fi or if you don't have a digital device, there is a kiosk that will allow you to fill out the form. Now, the form does take a few minutes to fill out. And here's the pro tip. If the line is pretty long at the immigration exit, you could just fill out the form there. It will take probably five minutes. And this line you see here took us about 20 minutes to get through. And that's it. We made it to Singapore. Now that we've cleared immigration, we have to make it into the city. There are several options at an affordable cost, but I decided to use the ride sharing app Grab. I downloaded it and set it up prior to arriving in Singapore, so I wouldn't have to stress about it while setting it up at the airport. Now for this day, we are headed to the Hilton Orchard Road, and that cost us 23 Singapore dollars. How did I book this flight? So it was 35,000 EVA air miles, and I got those miles from Capital One. Now that is per person. That isn't a great deal by any means, but it was the way we use them because with Eva Air Miles, you get a free stopover on a round trip ticket in each direction. So our flight was from Osaka to Singapore with a stopover in Taipei for nine months because we live in Taipei. And then our return flight was from Singapore to Okinawa. And we had a stopover in Taipei for one month because you can book tickets out up to a year in advance. So each segment is less than 9,000 miles and that made it a very good deal. And we squeezed out an extra vacation by maximizing the value of our miles. So that's how I booked it. My thoughts on the flight. Now, Eva Air isn't the newest and best airline and the quality is subpar to some of its competitors, but I like value. We got a good deal on the flight, so that made sense, and we wanted to go to Singapore, so it made sense. Now, on the same route, Starlux flies it and Singapore Airlines, and you might get a better experience there. Or if you want to go with even more value, you could fly with a low-budget carrier, because there are a couple of those too, but it really depends on how you want to maximize your miles or if you want to use cash. And for us, what made the most sense was Eva Air. Now, Eva Air is expected to make some refurbishments and have some newer planes in the near future. I'm hoping it's sooner than later, but otherwise, we'll continue using them if it's a good value. And I hope they don't change their award chart. 